corn. We eat corn. Animals eat corn. Our cars eat corn in the form of biofuel. We can eat, even eat corn out of a can that's made from corn. That's called bioplastics. But how much do you really know about corn? Show of hands, how many think corn is a vegetable? I did too, but we're wrong. It's a good thing I'm here to elucidate you on the anatomy of a corn plant because corn is not a vegetable, it's considered a grass. Each kernel is planted two inches deep. Oops, it's one little kernel here. Planted two inches deep, six inches apart from the next kernel, and rows are about 30 inches apart. And anywhere from three days to two weeks, depending on the soil temperature, it starts to sprout. I actually brought a prop in here for you. This is a sweet corn plant. It's a little tough, but you get the idea. Sweet corn plants are a little bit shorter than a, a field corn plant. This one is about six feet tall. I'm about, I'm about five two. I think it's about six feet tall. We're going to start at the bottom here. This is the root of the corn plant. It's a pretty thick stalk. Most people are surprised at how shallow the roots are on a corn plant. And majority of the roots are really small and stringy. I have house plants that have bigger roots than these. But the roots help to carry the nutrients and, and energy up into the stalk. These are planted in the ground. They also have these really thick roots. And these are actually on top of the ground. They grow outside of the ground and they anchor themselves into it. And that helps to brace the corn plant in. They're called brace roots. But again, you can see these roots do not go very deep. So when you get strong winds, there's a reason why the corn plants fall down pretty easily in the fields. The stalk or the stem is the main part of the corn plant. They have to be sturdy to support the ears of corn, the leaves, and the tassel. Each place on the stem that you see a leaf, an ear, a root, a tassel, is called a, no a node. This is where the growth spurt happens. As a plant grows, it gets anywhere between 16 and 19 of these leaves on it. At the same time, the ear of corn starts to, to form, but there's no kernels yet on the corn. It's not until the tassel comes out that things really start to happen with the ear of corn. Once the tassel arrives, you get these silks on the plant of corn, or on the ear of corn. And the ear forces the silks out of out of its casing. When you're shucking a piece of corn, it's the most irritating thing, those silks, right? And you're usually saying, God, there just seems like there's hundreds of these. How many kernels of corn do you think are on one ear? Just guess. 120. 120. Yeah. It's actually 800. Wow. 800, there you go. 800 kernels on a fully developed ear of corn if everything goes okay. So once the leaves have formed, the tassel appears. It's the bushy top on the top of the plant, and this tassel is actually the male part of the plant. What's unique about the corn plant is they have both male and female parts, and it's all in the same plant. So the tassel appears. It's considered the male part of the plant, and it contains the pollen. At some point, the pollen releases, the pollen is released from the tassel, and it has to find its way down to the silks of the corn. Have you ever seen, well, first of all, let me talk a little bit more about the, the ear of the silks. So for each kernel of corn, so each of those eight er, kernels, 800 kernels of corn is associated with one silk. So when you say there seems to be hundreds of those silks, there truly is. There's at least 800 of those silks. And when the pollen is released, the pollen, by the way, is only released for a few hours a day for a few days at a time. So it's a really quick process. It's bam, it's done. And it's a very, the tassels are very finicky, unlike some males in our species. <laughs> they don't care about where their pollen is released. They don't even stick to their own corn plant, their own female. They like to proliferate to other corn plants, and they do it quite often. And thank goodness they do, because this is where we get different varieties of corn. One of my favorite varieties of sweet corn, at least, is the bicolored. It has both yellow kernels and white kernels. 
And the way that happens is cross-pollination of corn. You plant two different kinds of corn next to each other in rows. And then on one of the varieties, you go through and you castrate the male part. You take the tassel off. And that allows the second variety to come in and cross-pollinate on the first variety. And that's how you get different varieties of corn and your bicolored corn. The silk, it's actually, it's very thin, but it's a hollow tube. If you were to dissect it, it's a hollow tube. And its sole job is to capture just one grain of pollen that comes from the tassel. Once it captures it, it flows down the, flows down the silk it's kind of like a fallopian tube, and it's attached to the ovary, and that's what actually develops that one kernel of corn. Now, have you ever had some corn that is either missing some, some pieces or kernels or isn't in nice straight lines like you see here? That's because somebody didn't do their job. Either the tassel has low pollen count or the silk has decided, not tonight, honey, I have a headache. <laughs> this again, as I said, is a sweet corn model. The field corn actually grows a lot taller, and the sole job of the field corn, or even sweet corn, from a kernel's perspective, is to make sure that kernel survives so it can plant another plant. So one of these, one of these pieces of corn actually will create 800 plants if it's done correctly. I want to wrap up my education of the anatomy of the corn plant with a fun fact. There is typically just one ear of corn on these large stalks. If you see two ears of corn, it's generally on the outside of the rows where they get more sun. And typically, the larger ear is going to be closer to the top, presumably because they're hogging all of the pollen from the tassel. So next time you come across a farmer, educate him or her on your knowledge about the corn plant. I guarantee they will be impressed. Mr. Toastmaster.